this episode, we get wet and muddy in the Scottish Highlands. Yeah, well, we uh, we got lost. Oh, you're lost, are you? So much for your bloody sat nav then. Two minutes of glorious light where everything just lines up perfectly. Now you are talking. I think you nailed it. I'd just rather fly by the seat of my soiled pants. It's terrible shooting conditions, but that looks perfect. This is my favourite kind of light, tickling the base. The sun has broken through and illuminated Castle Stalker. Oh, it's, it's, it's just sideways rain now. Well, you have been a bugger. Hello, Roy Wilson. Roy, Roy, how you doing? Gavin. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. What are you doing now, you bugger? Yeah, well, we uh, we got lost. The sat-nav did not uh, take us to where we wanted to go. Oh, you're lost, are you? So much for your bloody sat-nav, then. I, I, I was wondering if you had your map. Oh, yeah, I've got my map. Oh, you do? I'll get you on the right track, lad. Yeah, so I think we we took a left turn just before Bocculetive Moor. Right, I've got my map, so know where you are. Yeah. Carry on down the road for a couple of miles and turn left. All right, yeah. And then turn right. Yeah, and then turn right, yeah. And a couple of miles further on, and about two miles down the road, you'll come to a petrol filling station. Yeah. They sell road maps, and I get in there and get one bought. And shove that bloody GPS up your arse, you daft bugger. Well, you have been a bugger. So I just decided to get up in the hills and see what I could find. And it didn't take me long to find a diamond. Oh man, have I found the spot. You'll have to forgive the noise because I'm, I'm right next to the creek. I'm basically standing in the creek. In fact, let me bring this up to me gob a bit closer. I, I did not know that this place existed. I, I've never seen a shot of this place. I'm sure there are many. I've just never seen one. I'm not saying I'm the first but I've never bothered to come up here. How I've stumbled across this is I'm, I'm trying to get to this mountain here so that I can shoot across at that one. I think I'm on the wrong trail. I think I should have just gone straight up it, but this, this is a proper trail. So I, I followed it thinking that this was the right one. Anyway, I don't think it is, but I'm delighted that I've made this mistake, if I have indeed made a mistake. So what I've got with this composition, I'll brighten it up a bit, is this beautiful waterfall in the foreground and then it's just as simple as it gets it just leads you off to this massive misty mountain in the background it's about as simple as it gets <laughs> um, i've got to focus that this because i'm really close to the foreground but that is it i don't even need to bracket because look how dingy the light is not a huge amount of dynamic range anyway absolutely gorgeous i think if this shot turns out to be any good here's the shot is an absolute landscape photography treasure trove. All you gotta do is get a little bit lost. Right, so I've decided to hike back down the hill to where I started because I'm obviously going in the wrong direction going up there. But this trail just keeps going in that direction and that is where I want to be. So I think I made a mistake, but I'm kind of happy that I did because that was, that was a magic little spot that and I'd love to come back to it in all seasons, but especially, you know me, my favorite is winter. Imagine that mountain half covered in snow and that waterfall semi-frozen. Oh, now you are talking. Well, honestly, I'm lost. I've come down to the bottom of the hill. I've tried to uh, hike along the highway and find a trail up to that. And I can't find it. So I guess I should have done my research, shouldn't I? But where's the fun in that, you know? It takes all the joy and misery out of doing your own discovery. I, I just rather fly by the seat of my soiled pants and just give it a go, you know. I think I failed today, so now I'm gonna have to go and do that internet research anyway. <laughs> oh, it's just great, isn't it? Anyway, I don't, I don't think anything is gonna happen with the light. It is just miserable. So I think I'm gonna quit for the day. I'm gonna get a curry. But as soon as I saw this, the curry would have to wait. 
the misty mountains were just begging to be photographed. I mean, just look at the moodiness. And you know me, I'm all about moody landscape photography, especially of the Highlands in Scotland. So I pulled over, grabbed the Hasselblad, and captured this shot. After a cosy night in the B&B, we got up early to visit yet another iconic Scottish landmark, Castle Stalker. But as always, you know me, I had something to whinge about. It, this this whipped up water is, is just not doing it for me at all. And it's a shame because the light on those mountains in the distance is it's perfect, really. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'm not one of those Let's put a 10 stop on and do a fake calm water reflect. I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. I'd rather just come back. Just, just, it's an excuse to come back. Another eight flights, <laughs> another <laughs> three days of driving and all that business. Yeah, come back and just, just redo it and get the perfect conditions. And that is, maybe that's the moral of this story is rather than polishing a turd using tons of filters and just really trying to force a square into a round hole and get the shot that just doesn't exist. Just keep coming back over and over and over again. I've never got a good shot of Castle Stalker. I've got a few okay ones, a few filler shots, but I've never got the perfect conditions. And I know that they exist, those conditions, because I've seen some pretty special shots. I've just got to keep coming back and back. Oh, look at that light over there. That is beautiful. So that light might creep in and hit the castle. Now I'm told that you can actually spend the night in Castle Stalker. I think it's a, it's a rental. And uh, when the tide's out, I, I believe you can walk across. But if the, if the tide's in, I think they do provide a boat. I'm, I'm just hearing this secondhand. I hear that you can get a boat, they'll take you there. <laughs> and you can spend the night, probably more than a night, probably a week if you wanted to, I guess. That'd be kind of cool. But once you're in there, I don't know what you'd do. And the thing is, once you're on the castle, you can't see the castle, right? So to me, it's like the view is of the castle. So I'd, I'd want to be staying around here, looking at that, not the other way around. But it still would be a pretty cool experience. What do you think, love? Would you actually stay in there? Yeah, it's, it's a holiday rental, I think. Really? According to all sources, it, I think it was Roy that told me, so it, it could have been bullshitting, I don't know. What would you do in there, though? Well, what do you do anywhere? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> What's it matter where you stay? It's all the same. Oh, yesterday I was hiking in Glencoe, and I felt this little tickle here. And I went, went like that, and it was a bloody great big tick. I'm glad I got it before it latched on and started sucking me blood. Bastard. Now, another thing I'll tell you about Scotland is because a lot of these historic places, well, it's history, they're very, very old, obviously. And so they were built in a time when uh, people didn't have cars and didn't need car parks. So if you come to Castle Stalker, that there really is nowhere to park your car. There's not really that much infrastructure for tourism in certain places. So if you're on the Isle of Skye, if you're up somewhere near like the Quirang, as far as I'm aware, there are no toilets. The parking is a bit haphazard. So that's something that you have to just be aware of. Oh, there's a bit of light hitting it now. Before you come to Scotland, before you spend your dollars, uh, because <laughs> it's a bit chaotic. And if you're from America and you're used to having really well-groomed trails and toilets everywhere, this ain't like that. This is... Uh, I'm not gonna say the Wild West, but it's it's a bit different. Let's put it that way. I think you nailed it. Just hold it in and hopefully you can find a nice pull out. Uh, when she says pull out, what, what she means is a parking space. Yeah, a place to pull out, your car to pull out. Yeah. What else was that? Nothing. Where does your head go? 
<laughs> so is that your, your favorite castle so far? I think it's the, one of the cutest ones so far. Yeah. What's all that yellow stuff on the bricks? Though? All the bricks, that is uh, lichen. Subscribe. Like and subscribe. Right now, I don't know if you can see it, but oh, this is my favorite kind of light. You see how that bright hot light is hitting that island there, but then behind it, there's just gray, almost black doom laden clouds. I just, I just love that. I love that contrast. So I would, if I can make a request to, to the sky gods, could you just do that there where the castle is, please? That'd be brilliant, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. What are them chances? Slim to none. <laughs> well, it's finally happened. The sun has broken through and illuminated Castle Stalker with, as I asked for, those dark, doomy clouds behind it. Not bad, um, but like I said, <laughs> with, with this wind and, and no reflexion, it's not really a shot. It, it's, it's okay, you know. Oh, that's, that is such nice light. So it's one of those mornings where you get beautiful light, but the wind's just a little bit too much. It's hard to get it all. It, you know, you've hit the nail on the head there, love. It really is difficult to get it all. But to get an absolute killer shot, that's what, that's what you need. You need everything to line up perfectly. And that's why I always say one in 10. It's about one in 10 shots turn out that way. The rest are usually just fillers. Look at that, it's gone. Doesn't last long. That perhaps might be our signal to go get breakfast, love. Yeah, I'd like some. I'd like some breakfast. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's coming back. Never mind, sorry. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Before your very eyes, the illumination of Castle Stalker kicks off. Absolutely magical. Now, cue the mist. You know, I think the only way that I'm going to get this shot, you know, where everything just lines up absolutely perfectly, is basically if I just spent a week here, just rented a, a cottage or stayed in a hotel on this street and spent a week. Sunrise, sunset, middle of the day. Imagine what you would capture. You know that two minutes of glorious light where everything just lines up perfectly. That is what is often required if you want the absolute best shots that there is. Either that or you're just one lucky bugger. Or you just use Photoshop a lot. <laughs> Which I do, but... I'm not going to photoshop this one. Do you remember when I said I wouldn't photoshop this image? Well, I lied. I photoshopped the sh out of this image. Now, if you want to learn some of my Photoshop tricks, check out my courses, Photoshop for Morons, Volume 1 and Volume 2. There's a link in the description. I think this is our last opportunity to have a proper Scottish breakfast. Yeah. Well, I've had a few, maybe two since we've been here. They, they, weren't, they weren't very good. They're hit and miss. If you get a good one, though, it's, it's the breakfast of champions. So, should we just, I mean, we're expanding still from what we ate last week, so should, should we just do that? Well, yeah, we only have two days left, so. Yeah, cram it Short breads. Short bread. Oh. Right, let's go get breakfast. Yeah. So like a right couple of wildebeest, we gobbled down a full Scottish breakfast with tatty scone and marmalade. It, it was all right. Right, after that absolutely delicious feed, um, let's get back up to Glencoe and see what's happening at Bocculative Moor. So I'm back at Bocculative Moor and I'm, I'm a bit angry with myself uh, because the light for the last 15 minutes has been absolutely unbelievable. And if I just hiked up that bloody hill right behind me there, I would have had the shot of a lifetime. We're talking epic light rays. 
us off in the distance there, which I tried to shoot with the drone, but I'm not sure if I got it because the drone's got a propeller problem. And the, uh, it's, oh, hang on, hang on. Scottish Highlands, you'll be delighted to learn that this kind of light is actually more common than you'd think. You've just got to be prepared to go out in the rain and get soaked. And if the forecast looks terrible, well, that might just be your cue to go shooting. The drone's got a propeller problem and uh, it, it's making the uh, gimbal go a bit wobbly. <laughs> uh, and I didn't bring any spare blades anyway, so enough of my excuses. I should have just hiked up that hill. And I think there isn't actually a trail. I think what you've got to do, I noticed that there's a hole in the fence. I think you just got to go through the hole in the fence and just hoof it straight up. No, no actual trail in order to get this shot. So that's, that's what I should have figured out yesterday. I didn't figure it out. And uh, I paid the price by not being up there. I, I could be stood up there now getting just photogasmic shots. Anyway, I'm not, I'm down here. And I'm just shooting handheld with the Hasselblad, just single frames, not even bracketing, uh, because just over there, you can see it now, you get these, these light rays periodically coming in and just tickling the base of Bocchiletti Moor there. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do for the next five minutes. obviously my drone shot because as you know I didn't hike up there if only I'd known that these light rays would paint the scene in heavenly light so if you find yourself in the highlands in Scotland and the weather's a bit rainy and a bit sunny get yourself up this hill around midday all right now that I've got that shot um, I actually want to go back down Glencoe to the bottom end towards Ballyhoolish because on the way up I spotted this quite tasty composition with some misty mountains in the top of the frame and a trio of waterfalls cascading oh look at that light cascading down the hill so I think we're gonna try that one next so it's bloody typical isn't it we're just about to leave Glencoe it's day three we're heading back down south and the light is absolutely amazing today it's just Oh, man, look at that business there in the background. Outrageous. You can just see these three water... Well, it's probably just one creek split into three with this misty nub right in the background there. So I'm going to try and get a shot of that while I can. All right, let me see if I can explain this shot to you. It's not necessarily a panorama, but it's a stitch because the frame just requires two shots. Oh, God, it's raining now. I'll just continue. <laughs> So this is basically the bottom of my frame. I'll just darken this down a little bit. You can see this waterfall drops in from the left and then continues all the way into the right of the frame. So this is great, but that's not really what the entire shot's about. This is just the bottom half of my frame. So what I'll do now is angle this up. So now you can see this misty mountain in the distance and that is the top of my frame. And then I'm gonna stitch the two together to create one larger composition, which will probably be a four by five, or five by four, vertical. Oh, and it's just getting so misty up there now. Look, just look at that. So basically it's this section where you've got this misty mountain and then this waterfall, well, this series of waterfalls that cascade down the mountain. And this is what I'm basically looking at. What's in front, what you can hear now is that creek all that distance away oh it's 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 just sideways rain now oh, but look how misty it is this is a problem it's terrible shooting conditions but that looks perfect anyway if this shot turns out to be any good here's the shot If you want to 
to see my latest and newest photography work, you can find me on X, and you can also find me on Instagram. So after two days of extremely soggy but productive landscape photography in the Scotland Highlands, there was one last place that I needed to cross off my bucket list. But for that, my friends, you'll need to tune in to next week's episode, where I get into a tussle with Thomas Heaton.